guys, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using Hello Bluebird's Word Buddies Jungle, Dear Friend, and Greetings Bear. So I've stamped the images I'll be using on some Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black Ink. I recently did a video comparing the different families of Copic Grays using this gorilla image and that just inspired me to create a card with him as well because I just love him so much. So I decided for today I'm going to go with the neutral grays. These are the newest to me. I haven't used them a ton so I wanted to play with them and continue kind of testing them out and see how I like them. So I'm going to use the lighter sh three shades for his face and his hand, his ears, his feet, and his belly. And then I'll use the darker three shades for the rest of his body. So I started with the N3 and then I'm blending that out with the N1 and then I'll bring in the N0 for my highlight. But I like to have a bit more contrast in my coloring, so I am going to do a second layer with those shades. I'm just coloring directly over the same areas that I placed each color before, with the exception of the lightest shade. A lot of times with the lightest shade, I won't cover the entire image, and that way I almost get a fourth shade out of there where there's just the one layer of the lightest color. And then I'm going to move on to the rest of his body and I'm going to start with that N9 and lay in some shadows and kind of give him little distinguishing areas of his body like where one arm overlaps the leg or where one arm is behind his body. I'll put a shadow back there as well and just give him a little bit of definition. And then I'm going to blend that out with the N7, just making sure to pull that N9 into this mid-tone. And then I will use the N5 to finish off all of that area. I'm gonna work on the areas that have the darker colors first so I can pull those colors and get a nice smooth blend and just make sure to really go over the edges of the lines so there aren't any harsh ones left behind but then I will fill in the rest of the white space as well and I do really like how these neutral grays worked on this gorilla so that's kind of what inspired me to try them again for today. I did also color in his nose with that N5 just to give that a bit more definition as well. And then where the area of his kind of side of his body meets the belly, I'm going to blend over that with the N3 and then I'll finish off his belly with the N1 and the N0. I wanted to give him some rosy cheeks, so I'm going to use R11 and R20 for that. And I'm coloring over kind of the line around his face and continuing that blush over the edge there and then blending that out with the R11. I also added just a touch of the R11 on the insides of his ears. And then I wanted to color some of the accessory images with these shades as well, but I knew I was going to need a third shade, so I'm going to pull in the R000, and then I'm going to color in the smallest stripe on the party hat. Because it's so small, I ended up only using the darker two shades, but I will use all three shades for the balloon, starting with that R20 on the bottom and then up the left side, and then blending that out with the R11, and then I'll use that R000 for the highlight. Now that R000 does have a lot of colorless blender in it, so it really pushes back the other shades. So I am going to do a second layer on that as well, just to smooth everything out and give it that depth of color that I'm looking for. For the tree branch, I wanted a really rich, warm brown tone, so I went with the E20s. I chose E23, E25, and E27. 
So I'm going to take that E27 first and give it some shadow on the underside of all of the branches and also the main part of the branch. And then I'm going to blend that out with the E25, just making sure once again to catch the edge of that E27 because those darker colors are really dark. They can sometimes leave behind, you know, like a, a line of color, which I want to avoid. So making sure to smooth over the edge with the next shade is going to help with that blend. I'm also going to be adding some wood grain texture that will help with that as well. But first I'm going to continue blending with my lightest shade, that E23 and just making sure that everything is nicely filled in. And then I'm going to give this a few seconds to dry, maybe half a minute to a minute, so that the lines that I do are going to show up on top and not blend in too much. If you work too quickly and the paper is still wet and saturated, uh, these colors are going to want to kind of dissolve into each other. So I'm going to use the E29 to just do some little lines and some circles and whirls and burls and things to just give it a bit of texture and bring that tree branch to life. For my leaves, I decided to go with G40, G94, and G99. I wanted something that would stand out in contrast to the background that I'm going to be doing, but also match as well. So I went back and forth, but ended up going with these shades. I thought the olive tones kind of went well with the rest of the uh, images so far. So I'm using that G99 at the base of each leaf and then kind of coming up the center of it and then I'm going to blend that out with the G94. And I'm saving the ends of all of the leaves for the lightest shade, which is going to be the G40. That's usually the part of the leaf that the sun is shining through, so it's a little more translucent. So um, I wanted to kind of mimic that look. And then just like I did with the uh, tree branch, I'm going to add some veining into the leaves. But once again, I'm going to let this dry for a few seconds before I add that so that there will be, you know, enough of a line there. And actually, I could have let it dry for just a little bit longer because it did soften up a bit more than I wanted to. So I would recommend maybe, like I said, 30 to 60 seconds of drying time in between, depending on how wet your paper is to begin with. Next, I wanted to introduce some bold, fun shades. This is a birthday card after all, and I wanted to have some nice pop of color on there. So I went with like a deep turquoise blue using BG02. BG05 and BG09 and I did another stripe on the party hat and I'm also going to do the gift wrap on this little gift here and I laid in that BG09 first on both and then blended that out with the BG05. I'm also adding um, some extra shading on the lid of that gift box and then using the BG02 for the highlight and then I went back in and added a bit more of the BG09. On the gift, I blended that out with the BG05 as well. On the hat, I didn't bother. And then for my final shade, I wanted a, like a deep magenta fuchsia pink. So I went with RV14, RV17, and RV19. So I'm gonna finish off the stripe and the pom-pom on the party hat and then use that for the gift bow as well. Putting that RV19 down at the bottom to match the shading on the box and then also where that ribbon is knotted together and the fabric would be gathered and then blending out with the RV17 and the RV14. Then I'm gonna take a black Sakura jelly roll pen and just get it started off to the side. Mine is pretty dry, so it takes a little while to get it going. The, the end is always kind of crusty, 
but there's still a lot of ink in there, so I hate to throw it out. But I'm gonna go over the eyes of my Gorilla to make them nice and bright and shiny again. And then I'm gonna trim these images out with their matching dyes. For my background, I'm gonna start with a piece of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock. And I wanna create kind of like an ombre background that is going to go down about two thirds of the card front. So my lightest shade is going to be Bundled Sage. So I'm blending that on to kind of give me a line of where I want to stop on the card. And then I'm gonna come in with my mid-tone, which is going to be Mowed Lawn. And I'm going to bring that in from the top and cover the top edge of that Bundled Sage so that I get a nice blend between those shades. And I will go back and forth between those two ink blending tools to kind of smooth out that transition and make it a bit more seamless. And then my darkest shade that I'm gonna add in is Rustic Wilderness. So I'm going to blend that in at the top and bring that down just a little bit, maybe um, like a third of that green space. I want to be that darker shade. So I'm gonna apply that on until it's nice and heavy and I have the depth of color that I want. And then I'll go back down once again, blending everything out. Then I wanted to do some splatter detail in this background to give it a bit more interest. Since this background is going to be pretty simple, I want to create some more movement and some interest like I mentioned. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just add some water to an acrylic block and do some splatters with that. I'm gonna give that a few seconds to soak into the cardstock so it can start to react with those Distress Oxide inks. And then I will blot that up with a paper towel to remove some of that ink. And then I'm going to start splattering all of my green shades, starting with the lightest once again. So I'm using that bundled sage and I'll tap that all over the background, including on the white space. I want that to kind of continue down the card and unite the entire card front. Then I'm going to go in with that mid-tone, the mowed lawn, and do some splatter detail with that. And by starting with the lightest shade and working my way darker, I don't have to worry about cleaning my brush in between or even really the block because the colors are just gonna meld together. So finally, I'm going to add that Rustic Wilderness and do some splatter with that. And then once I'm happy with how that's looking, I'm gonna let that dry for just a minute. And while that is drying, I'm going to mix up some of my Gansai Tambi Starry Colors. I wanted to add in this coppery gold shade. I thought that would tie in nicely with the brown of the branch. And it's also gonna give me a nice shine and that will be much more vibrant once it dries. So I set that aside and let it dry. And then I trimmed that panel down a bit to make it a bit more narrower. And then I took the Jungle Littles stamp set from Hello Bluebird. I'm gonna use a sentiment from that, the one that says, it's your day, go wild. And I'm stamping that down in VersaFine Onyx Black ink. And then just using light pressure with my Twiddler's Nook Pressure Pal to make sure that I get a nice smooth application of that ink. And then I wanna stamp on the inside. I'm using Lawn Fawn Noble Fur Cardstock and Noble Fur Ink to match. And I'm going to use a sentiment and another little birthday cake image. Those are all from Greetings Bear. So it just says, celebrate you and then has that little birthday candle in there. So I did stamp that down three times to make sure it was nice and bold because this ink does dry back a bit and I want it to be clearly visible after it does. And then I took a tiny strip from the Pebbles Lovely Moments 6x8 pad that had these leaves on it. I thought that would tie in well with our card. So I'm gonna glue that down to the left side of the card using my Barely Art Precision Craft Glue. So I'm going to adhere that down and just make sure that it's uh, flush with the 
top and bottom and then that left side of the card. I did flip that over. I wanted the center row of those leaves to be pointing upward. So then I'm going to go ahead and glue my branch down so that it will be hanging off the edge of the card on the left there because I want that little white bit of cardstock to be trimmed off to make it look like there's a larger tree there and it's just extending out. And then I'm going to peel off some release papers. I added some foam tape to the back to give it some nice dimension on the card. And then I'm going to line that up with the right hand side of the card making sure once again that it matches with those two corners and then I'll press that down into place. So once that's all attached, I can start to adhere the rest of my images. I'm going to begin with my gorilla since everything is kind of going to be placed around him. So I want to get him positioned where I want him first so that he's sitting kind of in the middle of that branch. And then behind him, I'm going to add the balloon. And I wanted that to be tucked behind at the bottom there. So I just kind of wedged up the edge of that tree branch with my fingernail and then tucked that behind. And then the little gift I'm going to add out to the branches in front of him as if he's just set it there waiting for his friend to come for a little surprise birthday party that he's throwing. And then I gave him a party hat as well. And then I wanted to make it look like that balloon string was wrapped around the branch. So I'm going to take a Memento Tuxedo Black marker and just draw some lines there so that it looks like it's been kind of wrapped around and tied there. And I'll add a little bow on there as well and just make sure that I go over it so that the lines are about the same thickness as the stamped lines of the balloon. And then, of course, I had to add a bit of glitter to the card. So I'm gonna grab some Stardust Stickles and I'm gonna add that to the balloon in the shadowed areas. I'm also gonna add it to the pom-pom on the party hat and to the ribbon on the gift. So I'll have a nice little pop of sparkle along with the little flecks of that coppery gold in the background when you tip it in the light. And there you can kind of see how that looks. It really makes it pop once the light hits it. I'll give you another peek at the inside as well. And that is going to complete my card for today. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Ring that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. I post new ones every Monday and Friday. And if you missed that gray Copic coloring video, you may want to go back and check that out as well. And if you're interested in any of these products, I'll have everything listed and linked for you in the description bar below. And here are two extra cards I thought you might also enjoy. You can click on either one to check them out. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing day. Bye-bye.